Okay, well this is the Canon XSR. It's uh, the latest flagship of the local Canon range, um, built by GWM or Great Wall Motors. Uh, this model became the flagship of the local fleet in 2023 and it's been designed very much with some serious off-road driving in mind. So let's have a look around it. Uh, one of the things you really notice at the front is it's got uh, full steel bumpers that makes it unique in the in the uh, Canon range slightly different grill treatment as well it's still got that confusing P letter P in the grill which uh, represents GWN's branding in China which is POA P-O-E-R so uh, it's a bit confusing in Australia because you've got both P and GWN branding so yeah big strong steel bumpers there for uh, serious bush bashing work uh, it's got big 18 inch and these are unique 18 inch chunky alloy wheels with uh, Cooper Discoverer all-terrain tyres. Uh, big flares here, composite flares over the wheels to uh, provide some body protection and shroud that nice big rubber. It's also equipped with a engine snorkel which breathes in from up here and uh, obviously that massively increases the car's ability to ford deep water. So. Um, quite some serious off-road gear on here too. Uh, roof rails of course if you want to put racks up there and some really robust looking uh, side steps as well and they're all metal too. So let's have a look and quick look inside. It's an amazingly uh, sumptuous sort of luxurious looking interior. Um, it's a really good looking thing. You can see that diamond quilt uh, stitching on the on the seat facings and on the, the doors. Nice uh, dashboard with a whole lot of different contrasting surfaces and lots of uh, different features as well. And you even get a, uh, a sunroof as standard so it's absolutely loaded with uh, with standard features which is great. Have a quick look in the back. And I must say, it's uh, quite a spacious rear seat. I mean, because I've got the seat, I'm about 186 centimetres tall. I've got the driver's seat in my position. I've still got about, you know, two finger widths or so of knee space, which is, uh, which is pretty good for a dual cab ute. Um, and uh, as you can see, the quality of that, of that interior trim just continues through to the back seat. Really nice looking finishes, lots of exposed stitching. Nice contrasting piping. It's um, it's really remarkable how uh, sumptuous this uh, this interior is, and uh, pretty comfortable to ride in too. So come round to the rear of the vehicle. You can see another big metallic addition in this uh, pretty sturdy looking sports bar, which you can see runs down almost to the uh, the end of the uh, the load tub tailgate is uh has um lift and lower assistance which is nice because these tailgates can be pretty heavy and there's a really neat feature on the back here which you often see on us pickup trucks just a simple pop out step which uh, makes it much easier to access the load tub so that's a that's a really nice handy feature and uh, i've used it several times um, and it does prove its worth when you've picture you've got a access the load tub. So you can see the load tub's fully lined. It's got uh, anchorage points front and rear. And um, it's a pretty decent size too. It's almost perfectly square. So you can see another big steel bumper on the back. So it's got some really tough hardware and you can see two recovery hooks as well. So uh, they've put a lot of equipment on this in, in terms of giving it that, that serious off-road focus. Uh, it'll tow up to 3,000 kilograms or 3 tonne of brake trailer, which is 500 kilograms less than the uh, category benchmark, but it's still a decent sized trailer. And because it's loaded with all of this off-road armoury, it's also, the XSR is also the heaviest model in the Canon range, and as a result it has the smallest payload rating at 875 kilograms. Uh, it may be the smallest in the range, but 875 kilos is still a decent sized payload. And I'll point out it's, it's larger than some of its top shelf rivals uh, like uh, the Ford Ranger Raptor or the Toyota Hilux GR Sport. So it's certainly competitive in that class. And we are talking about 
top shelf models here because this is top of the range and uh I know looks are subjective, but I reckon this is a pretty handsome looking vehicle and it's, uh, it's a decent size too. I mean, in terms of its key dimensions, length, width and height, it's slightly larger than a Ford Ranger dual cab ute. So it's a big bruiser and uh, I think they've done a pretty good job in, uh, in refining this into a, into a package with uh, serious off-roading in mind. All right, well, let's go and uh, take it for a drive. Okay, underway in the Canon XSR, and like all other Canons in the range, it's powered by the same two litre four cylinder turbo diesel engine uh, that puts out 120 kilowatts of power and 400 newton metres of torque. Now, even though that's uh, not class leading, it must uh, make pretty good use of those kilowatts and newton metres because. Despite its size, it certainly doesn't feel sluggish to drive um, and has pretty good overall response. And that's paired with a eight speed torque converter automatic transmission, which is a ZF design transmission built under license by GWN. Very smooth and refined unit. And the XSR differs from all the other cannons in the range, which are or have full time four wheel drive. The XSR has a more traditional dual range part-time system uh, which the driver can select high and low range and it also offers three different drive modes for off-road conditions like mud, sand and snow. And on top of that, it's also fitted with front and rear locking differentials which is remarkable that that's offered as standard equipment given that uh, front and rear locking diffs are usually quite an expensive uh, option they have to pay extra for in uh, in more mainstream models. So overall, it's not a it's not a bad thing to drive. Although uh, it could do with refinement in just a couple of areas. I noticed that the the engine still has uh, a little bit of turbo lag between about 1500 and 2000 rpm. Its predecessor, the Steed, uh, had it much worse. They've certainly uh, improved it, but it, it's still there and um, makes that transition from 1500 to 2000 a little bit a little bit jerky and the other thing is the suspension it could do with a little bit of refinement in terms of the way it rides bumps it certainly has a lot of noticeable uh, bouncing up and down and can feel quite floaty at times but it feels like that would be pretty easy to cure just with changes to uh, spring rates and shock absorber settings so if the turbo lag and the uh, and the suspension could be refined even more to make this this truck even better so the verdict well you've just got to look at it from the, the financial point of view this vehicle is only fifty three thousand dollars drive away it almost looks like a misprint when you run that against more mainstream models and when you think about something like a a ranger raptor costs forty thousand dollars more than this it's sort of brings it into perspective particularly when you take into account the enormous amount of standard equipment you get for this 53k drive away um, it really is a remarkable package and whichever way you look at it if you're prepared to accept you know, the the points of refinement i've mentioned for fifty three thousand dollars this represents outstanding value for money whichever way you look at it well we hope you've enjoyed this latest video uh, if you did please like and subscribe and we always appreciate your comments as well and we'll catch you next time. See you then.